Syngenta sponsored this video and gave me the opportunity to show you their new prosumer bottles with the tip and pour. Now the majority of these four ounce bottles will do somewhere between 4,000 and 8,000 square feet. The smaller bottles allow you to save a ton of space in your storage area. You can now buy enough for what you need for a residential lawn and it makes mixing a breeze. I have links to these new prosumer bottles in the description of the video. Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pest and Lawn Ginger. Today we're going to talk about grub control. Ugh, came down with the grubs. This is mistake number one, not knowing how to identify if you actually have grubs. It's common for people to say that they have grubs when they have a problem spot in the yard. Identifying if you have grubs is easier than you might think. You simply take your bear claw and really tug on the grass to identify you. You are physically going to see the grubs in the soil. And man, they look like some weird alien predator stuff. It's horrible. <laughs> and when you know you have them, you know you have them. Mistake number two is not doing a preventive application. Now I've found there's two different kinds of people in this world. There are those that like to learn their lessons through other people, you know, your little brother gets beat for doing something wrong. You decide that eh, maybe that's not for you. Now, the other type of person is just, it's the, the person getting beat. They have to go through the lesson in order to learn it. Now, I'm telling you right now, grub control is one of those things where you should learn from other people. Prevention is much better than having a slew of problems. The Ginger's preventive product of choice is a product called a Celeprin. And I love it simply for the fact that it has a six month residual where all the competing brand products last about 60 to 90 days. This means less application, less stress, and it's a name brand product, which I find very appealing. Now, if you've had grubs in the past, you have an 80% chance of getting grubs again this season, which is why it's really important to do the application now. Now it's true, a Celeprin is just built different. You can use a Celeprin now because you get season long grub control, but also turf caterpillar control, plus control of adult beetles, bill bugs, sod web worms, and fall army worms. The best part is there's no adverse effects to pollinators such as honeybees and earthworms, so you don't need to mow off the tops of the flowering clover or the dandelions in the yard before doing your application. Now, if you use the high rate on the label, you're only needing to do one application per year and the best time to do it is right now between April and mid June because you can knock the bugs down dead in both the adult form and in the larval form. Now this product, it doesn't need to be watered in, although it's still recommended, I'd still push through a quarter to a half inch of water after you do the application. Mistake number three would be erring in the application. The application method is very important, especially if you're spraying. You need to understand how much water or solution is going over 1,000 square feet and following the label to a T. One of the biggest application errors that I see is mostly on the curative side, which requires a follow-up treatment for the majority of products that you're going to find, whether they be granular or spray. This follow-up treatment is the one that really knocks them all dead so you don't have to worry about them eating your lawn anymore. Not putting the right amount of product down according to the product label. It could just be that you had a problem with the device that you're using to put the granular down or the spray down. Maybe not enough was coming out or maybe too much was coming out in one specific area and not enough in the other. It is very important that you follow the labels and understand how these products work so you get the right outcome. Mistake number four, be freaking out and starting to rip out your entire lawn. Well, here we are, Dennis's house. Why am I here? Well, because I'm gonna tell the story about my grub uh, damage life experience. So Dennis here goes from having the crappiest lawn on the planet, slays the lawn, and then he wins this award from Alet for having the sweetest stripes on the planet. Actually, it was during the, the competition the year I won that I found the grub damage and what did you do the second you discovered the grubs <laughs> the second I discovered the grubs I was like well this grass feels kind of weird it looks kind of okay but you know what's going on here and it feels a little loose and so I pulled it up and Ugh. pulled it up and it was just like loose fabric on the ground it's like sheets of pizza and then it was clean dirt underneath yeah yeah, yeah. it'll make your head spin but this is why I say 
never peel out the damages. The worst thing you could do, because typically if we just add nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, we can get it to reroot, which is just a basic fertilizer. If you got a garden fertilizer, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, something to that effect, give it four or five weeks. If you've caught the grub damage early, you can save it. But so, instead I had to uh, replant, re bring in some dirt, replant, reseed, and <laughs> it's, yeah, it was, it was horrible. Fun. You don't want to get to that point. You want to slay those grubs while well, identification, timing, and application methods are going to lead you to just that. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Till the next time, guys, at the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying grubs.